Hi, I'm Brent Hall, and this is Building with History. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Colonial Revival style and what makes that style unique, special, and still popular today. What is the Colonial Revival style? Why is it a revival, right? What is it a revival of? This style encompasses the Georgian Federal and Greek Revival building that took place in this country between 1750 and 1850. It's a revival of them. A couple times in our history, we have been reminded of our history. So, 1776, Declaration of Independence, 1876, 100 years later, was a time of revival. And then 1926, we revive it again. And revive it is a nostalgic redoing of these styles in this period. In 1926 in particular, we're gonna actually look at a house built by an architect named John Staub. John Staub trained at MIT, ended up moving to Houston and building some tremendous houses in Texas. So when you look at houses from the 1920s that are Colonial Revival, there's gonna be details that are very federal, there's gonna be details that are very Georgian, and that's the fun of it. During this period of time, there is a number of monographs and a number of resources that became available to architects that studied this style. One in particular I like, and that we know that John Staub used, was the Colonial Interiors books. He would look at this for inspiration. Notice this interesting way the door is nestled underneath the stairs. We may see that detail again. So we're gonna go look at the King House, built in 1926 on the bluff in Fort Worth, where you'll really experience the magic of Colonial Revival. This house is really unique and interesting. 1926 is 150 years since 1776. So there was a resurgence, a interest in American colonial life. We're gonna pick up some Georgian things, we're gonna pick up some federal things, and it's gonna be a mix of what was best in each period. We immediately noticed that even though the front door is elevated in that it has a pediment over top, there isn't a front walk to the front door. Now, there's a good reason for that. Let me show you over here. All right, look at this wonderful porcachere, okay? So this is something that happens with the advent of the automobile. You would come drive through here and you can exit out of your car without getting wet. Now, the garage, the carriage house, didn't become part of the house until the 1950s or 1960s. So it works architecturally, right? These tall, slender, ionic columns are beautiful and yet functionally as well because this is where we would have entered the house. This is a classic federal entry, okay? The leaded glass is something that begins to appear in the federal period. That thin little fluted column there, it looks like a federal fireplace. It's just perfect. So what we have in this stair hall is a collection of really pretty sweeps and angles, okay? This is a really pretty sweep here, right? This volute at the bottom here and the way this turns around. You have the same shape up here, okay, where this elliptical arch comes down and rests on this pilaster. The ellipse, okay, and the elliptical arch is pretty typical of the federal period. These pilasters are fluted. The fluting makes them appear lighter and daintier, not as heavy as a Georgian pilaster. you may recognize this image from somewhere, right? These are the books that we looked at in the office. Really what this is, is stop having fun. In these great entry halls of these historic houses, oftentimes to the back stair, there was a door. But because there was no walk up, we know that he didn't intend people to come in this way, but intended them to come through that other entry. Here we are in the dining room and you got corner cabinets on either side. One of the things that I find interesting on this whole story is the fact that these doors were not here when we started working on this house. They were actually hidden in the attic. Now, presumably sometimes in the 50s or 60s when modernism was really taking over, this was uh, too colonial, if you can believe that. So us getting this house back into that colonial revival era, we found these and then reinstalled them.
pretty important feature of a colonial revival house that you'd have a formal study like this. Notice there's no mantel shelf here, okay? Mantel shelves really start to show up in the federal period. And in Georgian fireplaces, oftentimes they just had a collection molding around the outside, but no mantel shelf. That's what he's done here, right? We've got a federal door which dates to the 1820s. Now we've come back in and we've got a full paneled wall room, which is more like a Georgian room in gum wood without a mantel shelf. So see how he's being playful here. See how he's taking kind of the best elements of each style. It's very nostalgic. It is a hearkening back. It's a remembering, but it's doing so in a very nostalgic way, uh, in a very loving way. Hopefully now you understand kind of the magic of the Colonial Revival style. Probably one of the more enduring and popular architectural styles in America. Thanks for watching Building with History. I'm Brent Hull.